Hello, here I am again. Today I'm excited to share with you a general strategy that you can use when factoring polynomials. When you're factoring a polynomial, the first thing that you need to do is to find a common factor from all the terms. And if there is such a common factor, factor out the greatest common factor, which is the GCF. The next step is to decide how to factor the expression or any given factor based on the number of terms in the expression, whether they have four, more, four or more terms, three terms, or two terms. If you see four or more terms, then the most famous way to factor it out is using factoring by grouping. But a suitable grouping is very important in this case. You have to group the terms in such a way that the groups will produce a greatest common factor or you have to group the terms so that the resulting expression will be a special factorable expression. When we say special factorable expression, uh, it is like a difference of two squares, difference of two cubes, or sum of two cubes, or a form of a trinomial. It is like uh, in the form ax squared plus bx plus c or a form of a perfect squared trinomial, a squared plus minus 2ab plus b squared. And if you have learned the rational root theorem or the factor theorem, you may also use that to find a linear factor of the polynomial and use it together with long division or synthetic division to factor the given polynomial. If you have three terms, let's say you have ax squared plus bx plus c or ax squared plus bx times something plus c times that something quantity squared, then you may try fast AC method. If you need a review of this one, because it's very important to know how to factor this trinomial quickly, so please watch my other video. The link is given in the description below. So you may also use uh, Bax method if you know this method, AC method with grouping, or if you see that the trinomial is a perfect square trinomial, it is in this form, then just use this factoring formula for perfect square trinomials. Or you may also try completing the square and just do this method, use this method only when the degree of the polynomial is even and it is greater than or equal to 4. If we have two terms, we check whether the expression is a special factorable expression, whether it is a difference of two squares, difference of two cubes, or sum of two cubes. And if it is, we just use any of these factoring formulas. Now, if it is a sum of two squares, it may or may not factorable. Now, the trick here is we can write this a squared plus b squared as a plus b quantity squared minus 2ab. So this is a perfect square trinomial minus 2ab. And we can obtain this expression by completing the square. Okay? And we know it is clear from this expression that it is factorable if this 2ab here is a perfect square. And in that case, it will be a difference of two squares. So we can use the uh, difference of two squares formula. Now, keep in mind that this sum of two squares is not factorable if it is a degree two polynomial like x squared plus 4y squared. The last step is to check whether you have completely factored the given expression. So here you have to make sure that all your factors cannot be factored further. If you can still factor a factor, then you go back to step two. So check whether the factor has two terms, three terms, or four or more terms, and then apply these uh, factoring techniques depending on the number of terms of the given factor. Let's try some problems. 
Suppose we want to factor this expression 10x cubed minus 25x squared minus 15x. So again, the first thing that we need to do is to factor the GCF. So it's clear from here that all the coefficients have a factor 5 and all of them have a factor x. So the GCF here is 5x. So we factor that out and we're left with 2x squared minus 5x minus a 3. Now, we need to factor it uh, completely. So this trinomial could be factorable. And since the coefficient of x squared and the constant term are just prime numbers or the negative of a prime number, it's easy to do the guess and check method to factor this trinomial. So we have here 2x. It's a product of two binomials. So if this is 2x, then this must be x. And we need to find the positions, suitable positions for factors of 3 and they should have opposite signs because the product must be negative 3. So here we need to have the minus a 3 here and then plus 1 and we can check our answer. So the sum of the outer and inner product is equal to negative 6x squared plus x. So that is equal to our middle term which is negative 5x. And this is already the complete factorization of this expression. Next, let's consider this uh, polynomial with four terms. So it is clear from here that all the terms don't have a common factor. So now, since we have uh, more than uh, three terms, so we have uh, four terms here, we try uh, factoring by grouping. So we may group the first two terms. So you have here 2x cubed minus 3x squared. And then we may group the last two terms preceded by a minus sign. So you have here minus the quantity 4x minus 6. So be careful with the sign. This plus 6 here becomes minus 6 because this grouping symbol is preceded by a minus sign. Now, when we group the expressions, if we can produce a common factor from the groups, then we're successful in doing factoring by grouping. In this case, we can factor out the first expression. So factoring the GCF x squared, so that will be times 2x minus 3. Now the common factor in the second group is 2, so we can factor that out. And we have 2 times the quantity 2x minus 3. So here it's clear that two groups produce a common factor 2x minus 3. So therefore, we can already write the expression as a product of two polynomials. We can write it down as x squared minus 2 times the common factor, which is equal to 2x minus 3. Now, when we factor polynomials with integer coefficients, usually we want the factors to be polynomials with integer coefficients. And in that case, we cannot write this down as a product of two polynomials with uh, two polynomials of lower degrees with integer coefficients. So this is already the complete factorization of this given polynomial. Now let us try to factor this polynomial. So again, it's clear that there is no GCF in this case. Now, when we group the first two terms and the last two terms, we won't be able to produce a common factor. So we will not be successful in factoring this by grouping. So we need to find other alternatives or other groupings that will let us factor this polynomial. Again, another way to do the grouping is you group the terms so that we'll be able to write it in a special factorable expression like difference of two squares, difference of two cubes, sum of two cubes. And it's clear we cannot write this as difference of two cubes and sum of two cubes. So we can try uh, writing it as difference of two squares. So in this case, we may group this first term, second term, and third term, okay, and write the expression as x squared plus 6x plus 9, and then minus 4y squared. And we can write this first group. This is a perfect square trinomial. So we can write it as a perfect square. It is the square of x plus 3. And uh, this last term is also a perfect square. It is a square of a polynomial 
the polynomial 2y and now we're successful in writing this expression in the form of a special factorable expression difference of two squares so now we can already factor it out we can write it down as x plus 3 minus 2y times x plus 3 plus 2y. And usually we write first the variable terms before the constant. So we may write our answer this way, but both of these are correct. And then times x plus 2y plus 3. And this is already the factorization of that polynomial. Now let's consider this uh, expression. So it's clear again, there is no GCF in this case, but it is a special expression. It is a difference of two squares. So we know it is factorable. So we can write it down as the square of uh, 4x squared minus the square of 9y squared. Okay. So therefore the factorization will be 4x squared. It's a sum times difference. Okay. So minus 9y squared times 4x squared plus 9y squared. So we know already that this second factor is not factorable. It's sum of two squares and the degree of the polynomial is 2. So it is not factorable. But this one, it's a difference of two squares. So again, it is factorable. So we can write this expression as the square of 2x minus the square of 3y. Okay, And then times the other factor 4x squared plus 9y squared and again we use a difference of squares formula and we'll get 2x minus 3y times 2x plus 3y times the last factor 4x squared plus 9y squared next problem so let's factor x raised to 6 minus y raised to 6 it is obvious that there is no common factor, but this is a difference of two squares, so we know it is factorable. So we can write it down as difference of the square of x cubed and the square of y cubed. Okay. So therefore, using the difference of squares formula, we have x cubed minus y cubed times x cubed plus y cubed. And since we have here a difference and sum of two cubes, so both of these factors are factorable. And using the formulas for sum and difference of two cubes, we'll get the factors x minus y times the square of the first term, and then plus the product of the two terms. So this is opposite the sign. So if this is uh, minus, we'll get here plus. And the last term is always positive. It's the square of the last term. So that is plus y squared. And then times sum of two cubes, we have here x plus y times, again, the square of the first term. Multiply the two terms opposite the sign. So we have here minus xy plus the square of the last term. So that is plus y squared. And this is already the complete factorization of x raised to 6 minus y raised to 6. Now, what if we write x raised to 6 minus y raised to 6 as difference of two cubes instead of difference of two squares? Can we get the same factorization? So let's see. So if we factor this uh, x raised to 6 minus y raised to 6, so we write it as difference of two cubes. So it's the cube of x squared minus the cube of y squared. And using the difference of two cubes uh, formula, we'll get here a minus b times the square of the first term. So that is x raised to 4 multiply the two terms opposite the sign plus the square of the second term of the binomial. And we'll get here plus y raised to 4. And it's clear the first factor is factorable. We can write it as x minus y times x plus y, and then times this trinomial, x raised to 4 plus x squared, y squared plus y raised to 4. Now, if you try trial and error to factor this trinomial, you won't be successful in factoring this expression. So in the previous uh, procedure, as you can see, we have here product of two trinomials. So therefore, 
this expression is still factorable and we can write it as a product of two trinomials and to factor this trinomial we need the technique that is called completing the square factoring by completing the square so here we make uh, x raised to 4 plus y raised to 4 a perfect square trinomial so we have here x raised to 4 and then plus y raised to 4 so the middle term for this to be a perfect square trinomial must be equal to 2x squared y squared okay but since in the expression we only have here x squared y squared and we need to make sure that this expression is equivalent to this trinomial so we have to subtract here x squared times y squared okay so here 2x squared y squared minus x squared y squared is just equal to this middle term which is equal to x squared y squared and here it's clear that we can write this trinomial as difference of two squares because this perfect square trinomial can be written as x squared plus y squared raised to 2 and then minus the square of xy so since it is a difference of two squares we can write it down as x squared plus y squared minus xy using the difference of two squares formula times x squared plus y squared plus xy so therefore we can now write our expression x raised to 6 minus y raised to 6 as x minus y times x plus y times these uh, two trinomials x squared if i'm going to write it in decreasing powers of x so we, ha we have here minus xy plus y squared times x squared plus xy plus y squared and this is already the complete factorization of this one which is the same thing as what we got in this uh, using this procedure okay let's move to our last problem so let's factor this expression so here we have a gcf so the greatest common factor is uh, 2x so we first factor out the gcf so this is 2x times 4x raised to 4 and then plus y raised to 8 okay so the second factor is a difference of two squares so it is the square of uh, 2x squared and then it's the square of y raised to 4. Okay. Now, since this is a polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 4, okay, so this sum of two squares may still be factorable. And how do we check that sum of two squares is factorable? We look at 2ab so if this is a squared plus b squared we know that a squared plus b squared is factorable if 2ab is a perfect square so if we're going to compute here uh, 2ab so this is your a which is equal to 2x squared and this is your b so y raised to 4 if we multiply that by 2 we'll get here 4x squared y raised to 4 and it is clear it is a perfect square polynomial which is equal to 2xy squared quantity squared so therefore this sum of two squares is factorable and how do we factor it out we use by completing the square so we can now write this down as uh, 2x times the expression a plus b squared so that is 2x squared plus y raised to 4 quantity squared minus 2ab okay and our 2ab is the square of uh, 2x y squared okay and now since it is a difference of two squares we can factor the expression and the factorization is uh, 2x squared plus y raised to 4 minus 2xy squared times 2x squared plus y raised to 4 plus 2xy squared and we may write our factors in this form so decreasing powers of x times 2x squared minus 2xy squared times this is plus y raised to 4 and then times 2x squared plus 2xy squared plus y raised to 4 and this is already the complete factorization of this polynomial 
Okay, that's it for this lesson. I hope you can now factor polynomials easily. If you enjoy the tips that you learned here, please don't forget to hit that like button below and share this to your friends. I release new videos every week, so make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already. Again, this is Dennis of KO Math. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.